Well, you may be wondering, how do we test our electrical power inside a house? Typically, the easiest way is to use an electrical meter. This meter is by Fluke. It's a great meter. It's called an amp and multimeter. You can test how many amps are running when you put a wire through here, and it gives you a selection. In this particular case, I'm on uh, volts, so I'm going to measure, right now I have zero volts, I'm going to measure how much voltage we have. I'm squatting down here, not because I like to squat, but I'm trying to show you electrical pressure in a house, also known as voltage. As you can see, this is reading 120 volts. So if you have 115, 116, 117, 121, 122, 123, it all is 120, okay? 120, 240 is what feeds into the modern houses. The bigger plug is the return, also known as a neutral. The smaller of the two on a decorative outlet, also called a duplex receptacle, because there's two, is the hot. So if I'm on the hot right now and I were to touch myself, I would get shocked. If I put it to the ground, it measures the potential of difference. Once again, it's measuring 120. If I touch the uh, screw here, this also should be 120. And once again, it is. If you touch the wall, you'll get nothing because the wall's not grounded. If you touch plastic, you'll get nothing because it's insulated and it's not grounded. All sorts of different meters on the market. This one's a very nice meter. This is made by Fluke. It's an amp and multimeter. There's also what we call tick tracers, or they, these test the magnetic flux lines. Electricity is based on magnetic lines. They're building up and they're flexing. Here, if we put this meter in here, that means that it's hot. These meters are really nice if you just want to touch something quickly and find out if it's hot. This is a three-pronged plug. Remember, the smallest one is the hot, the bigger one is called the ground or the return, and the bottom one for three-prong is that's the safety. That's your ground, so whatever it's plugged into has a constant reference for ground. Remember, if your toaster did not have a ground and one of the wires was touching the side of the metal case and you picked it up, and you made a better ground by touching maybe say a water pipe or if you're barefoot, the electricity would flow through you. So this is a safety that all modern electrical has. If it ever has a ground plug, never take it off. It's important. When we plug it in on this uh, tick tracer or uh, voltage tester, the, real, the old ones used to tick, so we call them tick tracers. But this is basically, this tests the uh, flux lines, the magnetic lines. Once again, you can see that it's hot. So it tells you that there's electricity and energy going up and back, and that's flexing, and it's making electrical feel. We're gonna talk about basic electrical theory. I'm gonna go over it a few different times, so bear with me, and I'll try to make it as easy as I can for you, all right? You have your panel, which is the power source. It could also be a battery. What happens is you have a hot leg, the power comes down, goes to switch. This is a switch open, this is a switch close. This is a switch open with the air gap. And when they connect, it's closed. So basically, it goes up to the light bulb, and it hits what we call like the little bump or the tit or whatever you want to call it. It's, it protrudes from the light bulb. Then it goes up through to this filament. The filament right here Glows. We've all seen that. And then on the other side, it's connected to the shell. There's an insulator in between here, which I'll draw in red, that makes it so that this tip does not touch the shell. It's a little insulator right here. Okay? So what that means is the only way for the power to get through here is to fall through this tungsten steel, which allows it to glow. And when we shake a light bulb and they don't work, it has an open because the filament is broken. The only reason why electrical goes back here, this is black, but in real life it would be white or natural gray, is the return wire, also known as a common or your neutral, okay? And the reason why at the panel is this neutral is connected to a rod that goes into ground, and this is a symbol for ground. So in other words, power is energy that wants to release, and the only way it can release is to go to the ground. So the only reason why it goes through the light bulb 
is one side of the light bulb is connected to ground through the neutral. Okay, it goes to the neutral bus, which is just basically a fancy term for a piece of metal. And that metal is thusly connected to a ground rod, which is where our source of power has reference. Okay, they do have ungrounded systems, but 99% of the systems that we always deal with, or, not, or all the systems you're ever going to deal with as a common residential owner, is a grounded system. The only time you'll find ungrounded is in commercial applications, typically. So unless you're going to become an electrician, don't worry about it, don't think about it, and just know this is how it's going to work. Let's go on to the next example. A circuit is also known as a circle. In other words, you have a hot battery. The battery looks like this, plus and negative. And then you may have a button switch, but we'll just show another switch. And then you have maybe a load. A load is basically has a resistor, or in this sense we'll draw a symbol like this. This is what glows. And then it goes to the positive. Notice how we drew a circle, hence the word circuit, circle. Hence the word circuit and circle are very similar. What a short circuit is, is if you go ahead and say if this was a toaster and the toaster maybe had a little bit of a wire touching the, the side because something happened to it and you go ahead and you were to touch the outside of the metal toaster. So in other words, if this picture looked more like this, a square toaster, and you go ahead and you're here, this is you, you're not happy because you're getting electrocuted, because your hand touched here, and instead of going all the way back to this uh, power source, okay, typically it would be the other way around, I'm sorry, this would be plus and this would be negative, but it will work the other way around. What would happen is the power would go through here, through the switch, and say, why do I have to go all the way back? I'm touching the side. His hand is touching the side. It will go through his hand, through his body, and to ground. So basically, a short means it goes any other path than the intended path. Now, if your dog chews on this wire, when it is, say your dog chews on your, the cord. This is a, say this was a corded appliance, and your dog chews on it, and he puts a hole in the wire, now what you have is you have the wire stops right here and right here. This is what you call an open. It's open to air, it's not connection. Now if your dog was in the middle of eating it, while it was on, these are its teeth, it could make a path through the dog and the dog would get electrocuted as well. I hope that makes some sense to you. I'm going to draw you a couple other pictures. But basically, you have a hot, you have a switch. The switch is open, the switch is closed. The reason why we call it a circuit is it goes through. Anything that's a load, like a toaster's a load, a light's a load, all these things, anything that draws power is a load. The only reason why electricity flows from one to the other is opposite that load is it's connected to ground or to equalizing or to zero or whatever you want to call it. So basically, it's almost like if you have too many burritos and your stomach's all full and you have all this gas build up, you want to release it. You want to get to equalization or if you have air in a balloon and when you open it, that air wants to equalize and get out. Same thing here, it wants to equalize so it will go through the load so it can get back to the return. Let's go over some basic electrical terms. Voltage. Volts is electrical pressure. Volts is pressure. In your house, you have 110 or 120 and 240. Some people call it 110, 220. Some people call it 120, 240. It's all the same. It's nominal. It can be up or minus 10 volts. Amps is what? Amps is the resistance of flow or the rate of flow. It's basically, I'm sorry, it's a rate of flow correct term is it's the rate of flow what's measured in amps. So it's a rate of current flow. 
Those are some electrical terms. We have resistance. What is resistance? A light bulb, because in a light bulb, as you'll notice, let's look at a light bulb again. Well, for you guys, I went cheap and bought the cheap board, and you can see it's not very good. Okay, so in the light bulb, we have the tit, then it has like an insulator. And the only way that this tit goes to the base, which has the threads, is a wire goes through here, goes through a squiggly part, and connects to the base right there, connects to the screw part. And there's your light bulb here, your circle. So as you notice, what happens is power will go through here, through the tip, through the tungsten steel, which glows to the side of the shell, and only because of the fact that it wants to get to the other side. When you wire this up, you have a socket, you'll have a hot wire going here, and connected here to the shell will be the neutral or the return wire, which will go back to the panel, hence making a circle.